Hug Gear listeners, imagine unlocking the whimsical secrets your body whispers with every breath. A tickle of science, a dash of wonder. But shh, no spoilers. Exhale your curiosity and dive in. Please hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. You won't want to miss what's coming next. Check the description for trusted sponsors and ways to support the show. Hey, good morning, everybody, or afternoon, or whenever you're tuning in. Welcome to the Wellness Lab Digest, where we dive into all things health and wellness with a bit of fun thrown in. I'm Vince, your co-host, and I might have had one too many coffees this morning, so buckle up. And I'm Hayes, the one trying to keep Vince from bouncing off the walls. Today, we're chatting about something we all do without even thinking about it. Breathing. But trust me, by the time we're done, you're going to see it in a whole new light. It's like that friend who's always there, quietly saving the day until you finally notice them. Today's episode draws from the teachings of Samuel Whiting, a New England-born former elite athlete turned human potential specialist developing science-based health and wellness protocols for extraordinary living. You can find him on Instagram at Whiting Energy. Let's jump right in with a little exercise to get us started. Hayes, why don't you guide us through it? Sure thing. Okay, folks, whether you're at home, in your car, or out for a walk, take a second to get comfy. Maybe give a little wiggle to shake off the day. Now let's try this. Breathe in deeply through your nose. Hold it at the top. Sneak in a little extra sip of air. And then let it all out with a big, satisfying sigh. Feel that? Just notice how it lands in your body. Pause for a moment and let your natural breath kick back in through your nose. If you can. It's a nice little way to ease into things, don't you think? Wow, I'm already feeling a bit calmer. That's what we call the physiological sigh. A neat little trick backed by a researcher at Stanford. Picture this. Back in the early 1900s, they had these iron lungs for folks who couldn't breathe on their own. They kept a steady rhythm going, but people weren't doing so hot. Then someone had the bright idea to toss in these bigger sighs every few minutes, and suddenly things turned around. It's crazy to think a simple breath change could make such a difference back then, like a hidden life hack from the past. Yeah, it really is all about how our bodies work. We've been breathing our whole lives, right? It's how our cells grab oxygen to make ATP. That energy that lets us dance, laugh, and just enjoy being alive. But deep inside our lungs, we've got these tiny sacs called alveoli, kind of like little balloons with a mucus lining. Over the course of a day, with all our quirky breathing habits, like shallow breaths or mouth breathing, they can stick together because of surface tension. It's almost like leaving a balloon out too long until it gets all sticky and sad. Ha! Sticky lung balloons? That sounds like the worst party favor ever. But seriously, that sigh we just did, it pops those sacs open, keeping your lungs in great shape for better oxygen and CO2 exchange. It's like Mother Nature's built-in maintenance crew. If you do it every five minutes or so, you're boosting what Whiting calls lung integrity. Who knew breathing came with its own superpower? It's like we're all walking around with a secret weapon we didn't even realize. Oh, absolutely. And here's something wild. A study from last year tied breathing to how well our brains work. They compared reading on a smartphone versus a paper book, and guess what? Paper came out on top for memory and recall. Turns out, the blue light from screens messes with that psi mechanism, overworking the thinking part of our brain and cutting off those natural sighs. Maybe it's time we put the phone down and pick up a good book every now and then. Our brains might love us for it. Mind blown, or should I say breath taken. So, the takeaway here is that this sigh is like one tool in your daily toolkit. We've been chatting for about five minutes. Let's try another one. Take a deep inhale. Sneak in that extra sip. And let it out with a big exhale. Pause for a second. And back to breathing through your nose. Feels like a mini reset, doesn't it? like hitting the refresh button on your whole system. It really does. Now, let's take a little trip down to the University of Florida. There's this researcher there who's all about hypoxia, low oxygen in the body, and he's been working with spinal cord injury patients. They use a mask to breathe low oxygen, around 7 to 8% for a minute, then switch back to normal air, repeating it for about 15 minutes. It sounds a bit like something out of a sci-fi flick, but the results are pretty amazing. 
Yeah, it's intense, like training at high altitude without needing a plane ticket. The payoff, huge improvements in motor control, people are regaining leg function, and better efficiency in their breathing muscles. Your body adapts in cool ways. It pumps out more red blood cells for an endurance boost, releases B, D, N, F to sharpen cognition and memory, and even ramps up V, E, G, F to grow more capillaries, which ties back to memory too. It's like your body's saying, challenge accepted, and starts building itself up stronger. And get this, it even activates genes linked to living longer, all from playing with oxygen levels through breathing. It's like hacking your body's software for better health Imagine telling your grandma you're boosting your lifespan with a breathing mask. She might think you've lost it, but the science is solid. So, why even bother with a breathing practice when we're doing it anyway? Well, it's all about connecting your brain and body, shaping how you experience everything. The stronger that link gets, the more you can steer your state, whether you need to be alert or chill out. It's like having a remote control for your mood. Who wouldn't want that kind of power? Exactly. Breathing's part of our autonomic system, sympathetic for that fight-or-flight vibe, which can also just mean focus and energy, and parasympathetic for rest and digest, bringing calm and sleep. Thank goodness it's automatic, or we'd forget to breathe mid-conversation. Can you picture it arguing over the last pizza slice and suddenly going, wait, I need air. Ha! Huh. Hold on, gotta breathe. I can see it now. But here's the cool part. We can actually influence it. Take David Blaine holding his breath for over 20 minutes with sharks swimming around. Extreme, sure, but it shows what's possible. That guy's got lungs of steel. I tried holding mine for 30 seconds once and nearly turned blue. What got Samuel into this, Vince? For me, it's like yoga. It pulls me out of my head when I'm all tangled up in thoughts. A good breath feels like untangling a knot. That's a great way to put it. Samuel grew up ski racing, and then power yoga totally hooked him. That led him to explore pranayama, those ancient breathing techniques. Then Samuel innovates by heading into nature, going barefoot in snow or dipping into frozen waterfalls. It pushed his limits and opened up the science side for him. I tried the cold water thing once. Let's just say I'm still warming up to it. Brrrr. I love that approach. It's all about creating spaces for self-connection, building community, and feeling safe and engaged. Breathing's the key to that. It's like a universal language that brings us together. Even if we're just sitting quietly, imagine a room full of people sinking their breaths. Pretty powerful, right? Oh, for sure. And speaking of science, there's some fascinating work with carbon dioxide too. Breathing in CO2 shots can reduce startle responses and help with panic or anxiety. But if we fall into bad habits like mouth breathing or over breathing, it lowers CO2 levels, causing vasoconstriction, hello, headaches, confusion, and foggy focus. Ever notice how you get all muddled after a long rant? Might be your breathing throwing a little tantrum. Totally. And it can make you sensitive to CO2 buildup, which spikes anxiety. That's why real time regulation with your breath is such a big deal. It's like having a panic button you can hit with every exhale. I used this trick during a stressful phone call the other day, and it worked like a charm. Calm in seconds. Let's break it down a bit. There's offline practice, where you set aside time to explore techniques, and then online, where you bring them into daily life. It's about building skill, and we shouldn't neglect it like we sometimes do with the gym. I mean, we'll lift weights all day, but forget to give our diaphragm some love. Time to start working those breathing muscles. They deserve it. You're so right. Breathing's been overlooked, but it's becoming more accessible now. The trick is to make it intuitive, not some rigid rule book. Try different patterns, cyclical breathing, box breathing, or the 478 ICO method, and see what feels good. I gave box breathing a shot once and felt like a Zen master for about five minutes until the dog barked and snapped me out of it. Ha! Huh. I love that. Changing your perspective opens up so many possibilities. You've got to experience it yourself. You're the pilot of this ship, and no one else is flying it for you. Take the controls and steer wherever you want to go. It's your journey. Let's try another sigh. Inhale deep. Sneak in that extra sip. And exhale big. Nice, right? Focusing on your breath really strengthens your diaphragm and intercostals, those breathing muscles. It's like a workout you didn't know you needed. I could feel my ribs expanding more on that one. Yeah, 
and it all starts in the brainstem, where neurons kick off the inhale and send signals down the phrenic nerve to the diaphragm. It's connected to memory, emotion, cognition, even smell. Ever notice how a whiff of coffee perks you up? That's your breath at work. Smell that coffee yet? I'm craving a cup now. We're just scratching the surface here. Spending five to 10 minutes a day on this can build stronger muscles and better coordination. It even ripples out to running or weightlifting, avoiding that metaborflex where weak breathing pulls blood from your limbs. I learned that the hard way during a sprint. My legs gave out because my lungs couldn't keep up. Ouch, lesson learned. Survival mode kicks in there. Training those subconscious breathing patterns to be adaptive is key. Your breath is a behavior. It shapes how you feel, and how you feel shapes your breath. It's a two-way street. Caught in a bad mood, a deep breath might turn it around. For example, get cut off in traffic. That gasp inhale is your sympathetic system going on alert. Long day done? A sigh exhale brings that parasympathetic calm. Focus on lengthening those exhales to down-regulate. I tried this after a stressful meeting, and suddenly I was ready for a nap. Best nap ever. Love the intuitive play here. The diaphragm's like a plunger. Each inhale moves cerebrospinal fluid, lymph, and blood around, and fascia connects it all, running from your feet to your tongue via this deep front line. It's like your body's got an internal plumbing system. Keep those pipes flowing. So true. But what happens when you've got issues in your tissues? Tangled fascia from emotions or injuries can mess with things. A tight psoas can even affect your diaphragm and breathing. I had a tight psoas once, and it felt like I was breathing through a straw. Stretching helped a ton. Felt like a new me. Posture plays a big role, too. Lying back can open things up. For floats or relaxation, try releasing fascia with rolling while integrating breathing. It's like shampoo and conditioner for your tissues. I rolled out my back last night, and wow, what a difference. Felt like a whole new person. Ha! I'm obsessed with that analogy. More fluidity leads to deeper relaxation. It's like giving your body an inside-out spa day. Who doesn't want that kind of pampering? Speaking of renewing your body from the inside-out, Hayes, all this talk about repair and optimal health reminds me, as we age or deal with injuries, our body's natural renewal can slow down, leaving us feeling less vibrant with slower recovery and that nagging sense of not being at our best. Ever feel like your get up and go got up and left? Oh, I've been there. That's where Stem Active comes in, a premium stem cell supplement from Healthy Home. It's designed to boost your circulating stem cells, those master cells that help repair tissues and maintain health. It's like giving your body a little repair crew. Imagine tiny workers fixing you up from the inside. Love that image. It's packed with key features. Ingredients like Madagascan aloe macroclata for up to 60% more stem cells. Tibetan sea buckthorn extract for bone marrow mobilization. Klamath blue-green algae for bloodstream support. Plus L-theanine for calm focus and coffee bean extract for antioxidants. It's vegan, natural, gluten-free, and comes in capsules or packets. I love that it's got something for everyone. Even picky eaters can jump on board. The benefits are impressive too. Enhanced renewal, better repair from aging or injury, and overall optimal health. That's a serious boost to your body's repair team. Imagine adding 5 million extra stem cells to your daily lineup. Pretty exciting stuff. Scan the QR code on screen now or click the link in the description to learn more and grab yours. Your body will thank you. All right, back to breathing. Where were we? Oh yeah, shifting chemistry for adaptations. Let's keep the momentum going. We've got more to explore, and I'm loving this journey. You got it. Hypoxia offers epigenome hacks like more red blood cells and longevity boosts. Plus, those sighs promote lung integrity. It's like a fountain of youth in every breath. Who wouldn't want to sip from that? Let's do another one. Inhale deep. Sneak in that extra sip and exhale. This brings us closer to nature in our tech-filled world, helps us avoid chronic stress and just be. I felt so grounded after that last one. It's like a mini vacation for the soul. Nice. Aligning with circadian rhythms is key. Giving yourself morning light with stimulating breaths, like exhale pulsations, gives you energy. If you're anxious midday, upregulate a bit. 
Then, in the evening, try longer exhales while watching the sunset to prep for sleep. I watched the sunset last night and slept like a baby. There's no right or wrong here. Just build your quiver of techniques. One breath can change your state. It's like having a toolbox for every mood. Got a favorite tool yet? I'm leaning toward those sunset exhales. All right, let's keep the energy flowing and wrap this up with some inspiration. This deep dive into breathing has been such a fun ride, hasn't it? I mean, who knew something we do every day could unlock so much potential? Thanks for joining us on this journey. It's been a blast to explore with you all. Absolutely. Breath is the stream of life. It connects you to yourself, your environment, and goes beyond words. It's deeper than we ever thought. Feels almost magical, doesn't it? We've covered the mechanisms, benefits, and practices. Hope you're inspired to try a sigh or two today. Maybe make it a game. How many sighs can you sneak in? I'm aiming for 10. Join me. And remember, it's all about intuition. What works for you? Listen to your body. It knows best. Trust that inner guide. It's been with you all along. Before we sign off, a quick heads up. If you're curious about diving deeper with live breathing practices, check out the description for some cool resources. There are free passes and awesome community vibes waiting for you. I'm thinking about jumping into one of those sessions myself. Could be a great way to keep this momentum going. Let's keep this good energy going into the evening. Maybe try a sigh before bed tonight. Thanks for tuning in to the Wellness Lab Digest. If this episode inspired you, here are three quick ways to support the show. One, subscribe so you never miss fresh, body-loving wellness insights. Two, share this episode with someone who needs it today. Three, comment below and tell us what topics you'd love to hear next. Want to do even more? Check the description for ways to support the show. Stay curious, stay well, and we'll see you in the next episode.